Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to Wood by Wright 2. I did a video on making this, just doing a run through and the fun of it. And I wanna start doing these videos on this channel where we're actually gonna go into a little bit more detail about how it was made. So for those of you who want to see those intricate how-tos, stick around, we're gonna build this. and Have a little bit of fun doing it. We're gonna make this out of white oak. I know, white oak, wow, what an ingenious new thing. <laughs> but this particular piece had some figure in one side that I thought was really kind of cool, and I wasn't gonna be able to use it much else, so this would work perfectly for this project. I'm gonna start by ripping this down to about four and three quarters inch. I want the final pieces to be uh, about four inches wide, so I'm, I'm taking my time and uh, I'm cutting it a little larger so that I can trim it back in the future. I find that smaller pieces like this are much easier to cut uh, vertically in the bench, though a lot of people like to do them on the saw bench, uh, just whatever you prefer. Uh, I, I like doing it at the bench though, so that's my personal preference. Next thing I want to do is actually smooth out one edge. I want to create a reference edge, and this is what I can reference everything off, so I want to make sure that this edge is square, flat, smooth, true, all of those fun words using some winding sticks to make sure everything is good. Next thing I want to do is clean up one end to bring it into 90 degrees with that reference edge. And these become my two reference surfaces that I can then measure everything else off of. Uh, fairly straightforward process. Uh, I find that I actually like using this freehand rather than doing the shooting board. Just a little bit quicker and easier for me. But uh, some people like the shooting board, so if you like it, go to town. Uh, just like, especially with white oak, I find it a little bit tougher to work at the shooting board, so this is a little easier for me. Next thing I want to do is cut them to their final size, and in this case, they're going to be about four inches by about four inches. So I'm going to use the uh, marking gauge, or panel gauge in this case, to mark out four inches from the two reference surfaces that I just put in. One running long along the board, and one like this one, in cross cut across the board so that we can rip it down, or cut it down to four inches. And then we can flip it the other way and rip it down to four inches. And then we have our first piece that is uh, four inches by four inches. There's something very fun about uh, sticking with rough wood and making it nice and smooth and true. Then we can start smoothing out the edges of that, bringing that piece to exactly four inches by four inches, and then use that as a reference surface for the next one and cut that one down to four inches by four inches. And now we have two pieces that are ready to go, except for they are not flat. As you can see on the bench, they need a lot of work. So I wanna flatten these as small pieces as opposed to doing it one big piece. I find that much easier to do, much quicker, and just uh, easier than you know making the entire piece down to flatness. Uh, can, I can check these with winding sticks, but really in something this small, just a straight edge running from corner to corner and then across both directions, you can tell if it is flat fairly easily. And I'm going to smooth it down and work with a, a few different tools uh, until I find the one that's actually working well at this time. With this figured grain that's going in all different directions, um, different planes were working well and other ones were not. I can make sure it's perfectly flat and ready to go, and then we can work on the other three sides of these two blocks. And keep going at this. We figured wood, it took a little bit more time than I was wanting, but the chatoyance on this was just absolutely gorgeous and made everything happy. So I was using rough plane, and I bring it down to a smoothing plane, make sure everything is really nice, and then finish it off with a card scraper, and that just brings everything into that finished appearance and makes me happy. Now that we have these roughed out, we can then clean up the, uh, the two other sides that weren't originally um, smoothed out. The, uh, the outside edge and face, uh, outside edge and end, excuse me. Now before I go any farther, I wanna create corner dowels to hold the plexiglass in place. Now originally I was planning on gluing the plexiglass together to give a seamless corner, but then I was thinking about it and thought, you know, I've never tried cutting grooves in a dowel. This would be something fun. So I was experimenting with a bunch of different ways and I found this to be pretty much the easiest where I, I put my 55, or you can do this with a 45 or any plow plane, and I locked it into the bench so that I could push the wood across it. And I thought there was going to be a lot of problem with keeping it in the same place to make sure that the groove uh, was actually following in the previous groove cuts. But uh, once there is a groove, the ski holds it in place and it wasn't very difficult at all to keep it traveling in that same groove and we got one groove out of it. But now I need to cut another one at 90 degrees. 
And I thought this was going to be a huge pain because how do you make sure it's at 90 degrees? Well, the first groove actually references off the fence and holds it at 90 degrees, making it very quick and very easy. And I was just really blown away at how simple it was to cut these. Were they perfect? No. Do they need to be perfect? No. Uh, they ended up working very well and they were very functional. Next thing I want to do is drill the four holes for these to socket into. And I put marks in three quarter inch by three quarter inch from the corner. And for the bottom one, I cut four holes that were nice and tight and snug that the, the dowel would fit tightly into. For the top one, I cut four holes that were a little bit loose. That way the top can slide on and off easily so you're not burning your fingers when changing the T-light. Then we had to cut the dowel to length. So I cut the first one to the length I was looking for, cleaned it up, and then I used that one to mark all the other dowels to the exact same length. And that way there wouldn't be any issue between them, uh, one being longer than the other. And uh, clean them all up and get them ready to go. Now before we glue this in, I want to actually make sure everything is smooth and finalized. Because once I glue it in, I'm not going to be able to smooth the surfaces together. So I'm going to be putting a very heavy chamfer on all edges. Um, so for the top piece, I'm actually going to be putting a chamfer on both the top and bottom edge all the way around the block. And then on the bottom piece, I'm just putting the chamfer on the top and corners of the block. Then we can slide it all in and give it a test. But before actually doing the, uh, before gluing it in place, I need to drill a smoke hole in the top plate. This way the heat can actually escape the box as opposed to melting the plexiglass on the other side. And I'm just drilling a one inch hole in the top. I bore through from one side until the auger bit comes out the bottom. And then I can use that hole to make a mark, put the auger bit in, and plunge through from the other side. This way the two lines meet up nicely like this. Pop. <laughs> nice clean edge, but I want to uh, clean up the, the top of it, smooth it out, give it a chamfer, just so it matches the outside a little bit. And just do that with a knife uh, that scares a few people, but it's actually relatively easy once you give it a try. Next thing you want to do is cut a plexiglass piece. And I want to cut it a strip that is the same length as the height it needs to be. And I'm going to use the calipers to make a couple marks, then use a straight edge and a knife to score both sides of the plexiglass. Nice and heavy marks. Then I'm going to put it in my vise with a sharp corner and a tight push, and it will snap off right along that line as long as you've made the knife marks deep enough. Now we have it to the right height. We need to cut four pieces to the correct width. And for this, I'm actually going to use a marking gauge with a cutting wheel. I found that to be the easiest way to make sure that they're all the same width and they fit nicely along there. Then with that groove from the cutting wheel, I can come in with a knife and score it. Um, actually goes pretty easily to follow in that groove rather than having to use a straight edge and then snap them off. Woohoo! Now we have our four pieces of the sidewall. And this is a one-way mirror plexiglass. I'll leave a link to it down below if you want to uh, get some yourself. Now I made them a little bit larger than they need to be and so to clean them up and bring them down I can put them in the vise and grab a plane and literally plane them down to the thickness that they need to be. I was kind of afraid there might be a little chip out, but as long as the blade is sharp, they plane really nicely. And I get that fit that I want so that these can slide in and out anytime. So you can see I can get the T light in, slide the last one in place, and then you can fit the top on. Now it is ready for glue up. So I want to have all of the plexiglass in there for the glue up so that it holds everything in the right place and the top then holds the dowels in place. Put a little bit of glue into each of the bottom sockets, slide the dowels into place, and then slide the plexiglass down in. And the plexiglass holds everything to the right dimension, and then the top goes on and holds all of the dowels in place so they're not wobbling side to side. Then add a few clamps, let it sit for a while, and it's ready for finish. And of course, because this is a Wood by Right project, we're using boiled linseed oil and paste wax. Uh, if you don't know my method by now, um, I have several videos on exactly how I do boiled linseed oil and paste wax. You can find those on the main Wood by Right channel. But it's a lot of just applying the boiled linseed oil, let it uh, soak in. I'm not waiting for it to cure. I'm going to do three or four, just letting it soak in until it's not doing any more. Wipe it off and then add paste wax. Then after that is done, I can slide it all in light the tea light, put that in place, put the last piece of plexiglass in, and put the top on, and we have ourselves an infinity mirror thingy. <laughs> a really fun project. I was very happy with how this came out. There were a lot of different ways I could do it with having the 
the, the plexiglass glued together, you get a seamless corner, which would make it a little bit easier to see all the lights. And I think I'm gonna do that in the future, but I, I like the look of this. It just kind of gave it a, this magical box, something that was pulled out of antiquity and uh, very happy with how this came out. So I'm looking forward to giving this to someone and uh, hope they enjoy it as well. It's kind of fun to stare into and I think the kids will enjoy as well looking into it at night and being amazed with all the candles running off into the distance. Very happy. So I hope you like this. Uh, please let me know down below. Do you like this two video format for the people who want to just see it with the music in the background and for those who want to find out more about how it was made? Uh, I'm liking kind of playing with this back and forth. So let me know your thought on that down below. And if you did like it, please hit like, comment, subscribe, share. It really does help out the channel. That's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So if it's an infinity candle and I put one in there, am I creating light? Is that like free energy? <gasps>